morning San Antonio starts right now. A woman is robbed at an ATM while her two kids were in the car with her. What San Antonio police are saying about this suspect this morning. And a massive winter storm is expected to slam the country this week that could cause big problems for holiday travel. We'll show you the areas of the country that may be impacted the most. And here at home, preparations well underway for the bitter winter blast that's headed this way. We'll talk to Justin Horn in just a moment. But good morning, everybody. It's going to be a fun Wednesday. It is Ooh. December 21st. And I don't think I've ever co-anchored a newscast <laughs> with the nicest guy on the planet. Oh, wow. R.J. Wow. Marquez. All right. Well, what RJ, an it's good to have you here yeah, this morning. Definitely, Mark. You know, we sit right behind each other in the newsroom. Right? So good to be able to be next to you right uh, here for GMSA. Really excited about this opportunity to be with this crew. Love you guys. Well, we love you too, man. I'm a big fan of R.J. Yeah. Marquez, and I'm glad <laughs> you're here all morning long. Yeah. It's going to be a fun newscast. Justin is in for Mike. Holiday vacations have commenced, mm -hmm. and I got my uh, faucet covers on late yesterday. Perfect. Yeah, I'm going to do all my prepping, I think, probably tomorrow morning. It's a good time to do it unless you're busy, and then maybe you want to do it this afternoon. Mm -hmm. But you want to start covering the plants now, getting the pipes ready, all that fun stuff that we've been talking about for really the last week now with this cold blast that is headed our way. We'll go outside for you right now. It's still okay. We've got temperatures in the 30s right now. 38 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 36. Notice the temperature and dew point getting fairly close. So there is a small chance that we can see some fog this morning, although we've got high clouds up above, so that should help us out a little bit. I don't think we see as much fog this morning. As you get set for your day here, know that temperatures will make it up into the mid-50s this afternoon, 57. We'll call it mostly cloudy. We'll have those high clouds most of today. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And, of course, tomorrow is the big day when it comes to this cold front. I want to show you the watches and warnings, and they are plentiful from basically uh, the Dakotas all the way down to Texas. We now have wind chill watches and hard freeze watches in effect for uh, most of Texas in advance of this cold front where wind chills will probably be in the single digits by the time we wake up Friday. All of this, all the details, we're going to go over it a little bit more and get you set right on that timing when that front arrives tomorrow. That's coming up in just a few minutes, guys. All right, thank you very much, Justin. This morning, San Antonio police are looking for a man accused of robbing his ex-girlfriend at an ATM. Police say her two children were in the van when it happened. The man got away with the money, but officers say they know who they are looking for. The woman told police her ex-boyfriend first broke into her apartment, then pistol whipped her, and then forced her to drive to a nearby ATM on Blanco and West Avenue. In your morning headlines, Title 42 restrictions remain in force at the border this morning as thousands of migrants continue to try to cross over. The Biden administration has formally asked the Supreme Court to allow the end of Title 42, a policy that allows migrants to be quickly turned away at the border because of COVID-related issues. Now, the program was scheduled to end today. The Supreme Court can now let the program end in a matter of days, or the justices could hold off for weeks or months as they consider a challenge from 19 states. This week, the city of El Paso took steps to receive what is expected to be a surge of migrants if the health restrictions are lifted. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will pay a visit to Washington later today. It will be his first trip outside the country since it was invaded by Russia 300 days ago. He will try and rally, uh, he will try and rally his top international partner behind sustained military and economic assistance. Zelensky will visit the Oval Office this afternoon for extended talks with President Joe Biden, who will announce that nearly $2 billion in additional security assistance will be sent to Ukraine. Zelensky will then address members of Congress on Capitol Hill in prime time. The visit by the Ukrainian leader to Washington is considered a remarkable moment in the 10 months since Russia's war in Ukraine began. In Northern California, tens of thousands of homes and businesses along the West Coast remain without power. That's after that powerful earthquake jolted people awake and shook off uh, homes off foundations, injuring at least 12 and leaving many without power. The magnitude 6.4 earthquake happened near Ferndale, a small community about 200 miles northwest of San Francisco early yesterday. Damage to buildings and infrastructure is still being assessed. The governor proclaimed a state of emergency for that area last night. Well, this morning, a massive and powerful winter storm is bearing down on tens of millions of Americans. It's just getting started, spreading heavy snow and record-breaking cold into the Rockies and the upper Midwest today. As ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports, it's all happening ahead of a huge holiday rush. This morning, a blockbuster winter storm is taking shape, carrying with it blizzard conditions and life-threatening cold. 
85 million Americans across 28 states from Montana to Alabama are now under storm watches and warnings. Well, let's time out where the snow is going to drop in Denver and Omaha in places like Minneapolis. Then that low pulls towards Chicago. That's when it rapidly intensifies. It bombs out. Those winds are going to get fierce on the front and the back side of this thing. Blizzard conditions across Chicago, maybe as far south as St. Louis, in through Detroit come Friday morning. Heavy rain and wind on the front side, damaging winds potentially along the I-95 corridor. With tomorrow expected to be the busiest day of the week for air travel, major airlines are already offering waivers for passengers headed through airports in the storm zone. Most airlines, especially if it's weather related, will usually email you or text you like the day before and give you the option of changing your flight. And it's not just the weather. A now resolved technical glitch at British Airways triggered a global disruption. Passengers facing delays up to 20 hours. If your flight gets canceled, experts say act fast, rebook on the airline's app, or head to the airline agent's desk right away, calling customer service while you wait. And they say kindness is key. The desk agent has the most power to help you. Just need to calm yourself down. Everything will sort itself out. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 436, 39 degrees. Oh, wow, 39 already. It happens more than you think. People trying to stay warm and accidentally burning their house down or even worse, ahead some simple and safe ways to heat your home. And as the Spurs get ready to take on New Orleans, how one member of the team is using some familiar tactics to improve his free throws. And taking a quick look at traffic here, taking a look outside Transguide Loop 410 and Highway 51, things looking pretty smooth out there as things begin to pick up. Maybe some people are already on vacation, but uh, you know, traffic usually tends to pick up throughout the upcoming hours. So we'll check in a little bit later on traffic. I'm seeing some flashing lights, but I can't tell uh, based on the brightness of the lights uh, if it's uh, first responders or construction, but I know Steven's here. Yep. He'll let us know if it's anything super important. Right now, outside with live cam, the Clouds are moving back in right now. We'll talk temperatures coming up. Holiday traditions at the Sears household. We decorate for Christmas inside and outside, but we don't start till the day after Thanksgiving. Inside, we always have a nativity scene set up somewhere. And our Christmas morning is when we open up the packages and enjoy our time together. These days, usually just me and my wife for a good part of the day. And then we have a ham for our Christmas lunch. And I wanna wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. During the Spurs 124-105 victory over Houston, you may have noticed Jeremy Sohan was using only one hand to shoot free throws. No kidding, take a look. The Spurs rookie has been struggling from the free throw line, averaging just under 46%, so he's wearing number 10. He's dyeing his hair. Why not try the same thing as former Spur Dennis Rodman? Sometimes it worked, and sometimes it didn't. He has a good stroke, you know, with his jump shot. Um, and, you know, obviously we're working through some things, and he's so young. I mean, it all comes down to just being aggressive, being confident, and uh, he's going to – He's that doesn't phase him at all, missing free throws. He's going to keep trying to get to the line, which is what you really like to see. Spurs take on the New Orleans Pelicans tomorrow night. Tip-off set for 7 p.m. at Smoothie King Center. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The possibility of signing free agent wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. is now dwindling after it was kept alive by Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones, but now he's facing the fact the window is closing for this season. The plan had been if the Cowboys assign OBJ, he would be placed on IR, meaning he would have to miss at least four games. There are only three games left in the regular season. That means Beckham would not have been available until after the wild card playoffs. And we consider the Cowboys haven't advanced past the divisional round since 1995. He might be available for one game. Jones admitted on his weekly radio show in Dallas that OBJ becoming a Cowboy is fading. As of this morning, we don't have anything, but uh, I don't have an assessment. The reality is, though, that we're, uh, time is uh, moving on down the road relative to being uh, uh, relative to uh, uh, playing uh, in uh, the uh, playoffs, and so uh, the, the, every day uh, diminishes our chances of getting uh, going forward. Well, as if the Houston Texans don't have enough problems, now this. It's being reported the roof at NRG Stadium failed to fully open and test before their game against the Chiefs, forcing officials to keep it closed during the entire game. It was promoted to be open in a tweet on Friday, but 
the following, uh, it, but following the failed test, it stayed shut. The fact that the roof at Energy has not been open since December of 21 and fans were looking forward to since Texans have not won at home all season long. Trying to give fans something to look forward to. It didn't work out. Here at home, following the University of Incarnate Word Cardinals record setting football season, five members of the team have earned stat uh, perform FCS All America honors. One of the first team, two on the second team, one on the third, and one with freshman honors. Starting quarterback Lindsey Scott Jr. named first team All-American after throwing for 60 touchdowns and scoring another 11 on the ground. It helped lead the Cardinals to their first ever FCS National Semifinals game. Did not go the way they wanted it to go, mm -hmm. but... A great season nonetheless. They did. And, uh, man, the Texans just can't get a break. Even nope. when they try and do something for the fans, yeah. it backfires on them. Well, I'll see how it goes next year. 443, 39 degrees. All right. Sticking with the theme here, staying warm when temperatures drop could become dangerous if you do not do it right. Up next, the do's and don'ts when it comes to heating your home. And here's that spot we're keeping an eye on right now. We'll see all those headlights kind of off to right center of your screen. 410 Highway 151 area. When we get an explanation, we'll let you know. Hey, real quick, we got an update from Stephen Cavazos. We were talking about that incident at 410 mm -hmm. and 151. We understand that is a fatality accident. Our Katrina Weber is on the way, and we have more details coming up. It just went on a push alert, so make sure your notifications are activated for the KSAT app. 446 right now, when it gets super cold, people sometimes use their kitchen oven to heat their home. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz shows us a safer way to warm up a room. Safety experts agree you should never use your range or gas oven as a heater. But a new Consumer Report survey found one in five Americans with an annual household income of less than $30,000 and who have a gas range say they used it to heat their home in the past year. Not only is it a fire and burn hazard, but heating an apartment or your home with an oven that's on and open can emit dangerous pollutants and gases into your home. A gas range or oven used for heating rooms can cause a buildup of carbon monoxide in the house. Besides carbon monoxide, Consumer Reports found that gas ranges can emit nitrogen oxide levels that exceed indoor air quality criteria, especially with no ventilation. These gases can worsen asthma and lung diseases and increase the risk of asthma in young children. A safer heating option is a space heater, but choose one with an automatic shutoff in case it overheats or tips over, like this model from Comfort Zone. Space heaters should be at least three feet from anything that burns like bedding or draperies. Extension cords in space heaters are a bad mix. The space heater should be plugged directly into the wall. Also, turn off and unplug a space heater when you leave and never leave it on while you're sleeping. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, and we're following the latest on this traffic situation here. Highway is closed right now, Loop 410, the westbound lanes at State Highway 151. And of course, this is because of a major crash. Traffic is being diverted to the West Military Drive exits. And of course, we are working to gather more details right now on this a pretty significant crash on this Wednesday morning. So already busy out there on the roadways and uh, got a situation here. That's right. And we understand at least one person has died. Katrina's on the way. Mm -hmm. We're going to have an update coming up later in the newscast. Jun Justin joins us here at the desk. Any of the thinking on what's about to happen? Uh, the forecast changed at all? No, we, I okay. mean, it's still online. We're thinking one, two o'clock tomorrow. That's when things really start to rapidly change. We get gusty winds, cold temperatures. And it's going to happen very quick. So as I said earlier, you want to make your preps today or early tomorrow because uh, once it happens, it's going to get very, very windy. And you'll see things uh, as far as temperatures go. They'll drop off very rapidly. 39 degrees right now. Northwesterly winds at about three miles per hour. It's chilly out there this morning. We've got some high clouds streaming across, but uh, still temperatures have managed to drop down to 33 in Kerrville, 34, Fredericksburg, 37, New Braunfels as some 50s down to the south here around Bear County. We're right around 40, maybe a degree or two below. And then once the sun comes up, we should eventually ease our way up into the 50s. A case that 12 hour forecast today, 37 to 7 o'clock, but 46 at 10 a.m., 48, 11. And by 3 p.m., we're at 56, probably topping out around 56 or 57. And we'll call it mostly cloudy. Uh, as we look at the radar and satellite picture, it, it's quiet here around Texas. There's not a lot going on other than those uh, those thin high clouds uh, 
moving across the state. As we look north, there is more activity as you go into the Pacific Northwest, a lot of snow. And this is kind of where the things initially start to go bad here as far as travel. Now, let me reiterate here across Texas, we are not expecting any ice or snow. So travel across Texas, despite the fact it's going to be cold, is not going to be a problem. But if you're traveling to uh, the Pacific Northwest or the Midwest tomorrow, that's when things start to get uh, a little worse and start to go downhill. Uh, as we look at the big picture here, yeah, there is some snow streaming across, uh, but the, the bulk of the action hasn't arrived just yet. It's negative 31 Edmonton. We've been watching that temperature very closely. It's been pretty steadily cold, if not just ridiculously cold. But that cold air is starting to spill down, and uh, this process uh, will really take hold tomorrow. So that front races south. By tomorrow morning, it is 5 in Amarillo, 29 Midland, but that front hasn't even uh, made it really through there yet. Then by noontime, it's on our doorstep. So 61, that's where we peak tomorrow, right around lunch. And then by the afternoon, temperatures plummet into the 40s. We're already talking wind chills at this point. Uh, we're already perhaps below freezing in places like Fredericksburg. And then by 10 p.m., 25 here in San Antonio. Could already start to see some teens in some spots across the hill country. And then by tomorrow, or Friday morning, I should say, we're down to 18 and uh, places like Kerrville down to 12, Rock Springs 14. So this is, as we've been saying, very, very cold. Not only that, we've got the gusty winds. And this is a concern because we could be looking at gusts anywhere from, I'd say 35 to 40, but maybe a few gusts up near 50 miles per hour. This would be Thursday night into early Friday morning. So as you can imagine, once we get temperatures in the teens and winds like this, you're talking a pretty extreme wind chills. Five is what it could feel like Friday morning, negative two in Bernie. Uh, so that, this is the dangerous kind of cold that we do need to prep for. Uh, bottom line here, it is going to be windy. Don't forget to tie down the Christmas decorations too, because with those kind of winds, those things will blow away. Very cold, dangerous wind chills. As we said, Texas travel, not a problem. So here it is all laid out in these seven day forecast 62, but falling temperatures tomorrow, 35 Friday, 40 Saturday, 51 Sunday. And uh, we'll be looking at uh, 60s by the time we get into Monday and Tuesday. So that looks a little bit better and we'll get back up above freezing, but several days there where we're sub freezing, especially in the mornings. And by the way, very quickly, winter officially begins today, 3.48 p.m., right on schedule. <laughs> oh, it's going to say. <laughs> yeah. uh, that worked cold. out. It did. Yeah. yeah. Timing definitely. Yeah, makes sense there with this drop in temperatures. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. 452, 39 degrees. Up next, a first look at some of the most anticipated movies of 2023, plus a major musical milestone for Queen. Five till five, season three of Emily in Paris debuts today, plus a look at some of the most anticipated films of 2023. Yeah, we were just talking about this new Avatar movie, but looking ahead. So for the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Uh-oh, new neighbor incoming. Be cool. We're going back to Paris for the holidays. The new season of Emily in Paris drops today, and keep in mind while you're watching, Lily Collins struggle to speak French as her character. The real Collins actually speaks French pretty well. That's a little difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit difficult to pretend like you don't know how to say something well, in know. a way that you know it, but mm -hmm. the, yeah, and to mispronounce it over and over and over again. It's like, I just want to. I just want to answer it fully in French, so um, it is tricky. All episodes of season three of Emily in Paris are out today on Netflix. Moviegoers excited Guardians. about returning to space next year. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is the most anticipated blockbuster of 2023. That according to Fandango, which took a poll of movie ticket buyers. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse coming in second. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania in third. Guardians 3 is in theaters May 5th. Marvel is owned by Disney, the parent company of ABC News. The band Queen still wildly popular. Their rock opera epic Bohemian Rhapsody hitting over 2 billion streams on Spotify. The only classic rock act to reach that milestone. And Oscar-winning actress Jane Fonda with a birthday today. She's 85. While Oscar nominee Samuel L. Jackson turned 74. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now, 456, 39 degrees. 
As thousands of migrants wait to cross into Texas, immigration restrictions known as Title 42 remain in place this morning. How border cities are preparing for a sudden influx of people if and when those restrictions are lifted. Plus, a look at how the San Antonio Zoo and its animal residents are getting ready for the freezing temperatures later this week. All right, we just saw Stephen Cavazos walk into the studio right now. We're going to update you on this major accident there, Loop 410 State Highway 51. He's standing by. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A local woman shot in the back of the head while driving. What San Antonio police are saying about the search for the suspect and what he was driving. The waiting game over Title 42 continues this morning. I'm Morgan Norwood, and I'll have the very latest from the border here in El Paso, Texas. That's coming up. And taking a look at live cam this morning, we are getting ready for a nice dip in temperatures here as we get ready for the Christmas holiday. Justin is standing by with the latest forecast. And good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is December 21st. Vacations have begun. So RJ's in this morning. We're calling today the bro show. Yeah, as we do for KSAT News now sometimes, but uh, glad to be with you, Mark. We sit right next to each other in the newsroom. So mm -hmm. this is uh, going to be a fun, fun ride today. Uh, it's going to be a treat for all of us. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're here, RJ. I like 39 degrees and this is just a taste of what is about to head our way. We'll talk to Stephen about traffic in a moment, but here's Justin with an update on the forecast. Glad I could be part of the bro show, by the way. Yeah. And uh, let me first start by saying, would it surprise you if I told you it is still technically fall? Uh, we don't officially go into winter until later this afternoon, but boy, by the time we get into tomorrow, it is going to feel like it. This big front is still scheduled for just after lunch tomorrow. Let's go outside for you right now. We've got a few clouds and temperatures sitting at 40 degrees. Dew point is at 37 and northwesterly winds at about three miles per hour. Pollen count, if you missed it yesterday, molds are moderate. I think that number probably comes down today. Mountain cedar, well, we have more of a southerly breeze, so we're not expecting a big rise yet. But when we get those gusty winds out of the north on Friday, that could change. Heads up there. Here's a case at 12 hour forecast 37 degrees 7 o'clock 37 8 a.m. We're at 46 by 10 o'clock. We're going to call it mostly cloudy this afternoon. Noontime 50. Then we're up to 56 57 this afternoon. That's probably our high temperature. Still looking at southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. You have through today and early tomorrow to get those preps done before this cold air hits and it will be cold as we've been saying. The forecast does not change so we're still thinking teens by the time we get into Friday morning along with those gusty winds, which means some dangerously cold wind chills. We talk much more about that in just a second. But first, let's get to the fourth component of our bro show. Steven, good morning, right. sir. Hey, with Justin. Well, wish it was all smiles over here. Unfortunately, we do have a pretty serious crash. This is a shot we've been showing you from Trans Guide along 410 at State Highway 151. Uh, that on ramp or that exit ramp there, it looks like it's closed from this Trans Guide camera. I've been often on the phone with our friends over there. We do know that the highway is shut down due to a deadly crash. And unfortunately, it's not we're not sure at what point we're going to see that area reopen. Now, the good news here is that the majority of the metropolitan area is still pretty quiet. We know that there's not really going to be a lot of folks out there this morning, but let's just take you into where we're seeing that problem. 410 westbound uh, near State Highway 151. That area is closed off. Uh, RJ mentioned this earlier. You can exit West Military Drive, and that's actually where traffic is being diverted at this time. But notice that there is already a little bit of a buildup that is taking place out there. 410 is one of those corridors where we see a lot of also uh, road construction take place. So just all also be very wary if you have to travel through the area. You'll also see some flashing lights out there. And this is also where we find our Katrina Weber, who is live there now. And Katrina, we understand that at least one person died from their injuries. That's right, a woman in her 20s was killed, the driver of the car. Now, it looks like the investigation here is just about to wrap up, but it's unclear if police have figured out exactly what happened or what went wrong behind the wheel. The car involved uh, just now about to be towed. We have a tow truck on scene. The car is here uh, on those ramps from westbound 410 to highway 151 now according to police this happened about 2 30 this morning they say there were two women in their 20s in this car uh, for some reason the driver lost control the car rolled over she was ejected from the car and she's the one who was killed in this crash the passenger also injured was taken to a hospital uh, for treatment the highway has been shut down since then but we have just seen uh, the medical examiner leave the scene looks like some of these police are starting to 
clear out. So it could be just a matter of time before they reopen the lanes of 410. But again, one woman in her 20s killed in this crash early this morning. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, Katrina, thank you very much for the update. New this morning, the search on for a suspect, San Antonio police say, uh, shot a woman he knew after he she left a local bar. Happened just before midnight last night in the 13,500 block of O'Connor on the northeast side near Fountainwood Drive. Police say the 24-year-old woman and her friends had just left the bar and were driving on O'Connor when a man on a motorcycle pulled up next to them and started shooting. SAPD says the woman was hit in the back of the head is in a critical condition at an area hospital. A passenger in the car was also hurt and taken to the hospital. And a reminder, warming centers will be open around the time the cold front arrives later this week. Here's a list of all seven warming centers in our area. They will open tomorrow at 3 p.m. Anyone coming to the center should bring clothes, supplies, and medicine. There will also be kennels available for your pets. And this is at Normoyle Southside Lions at Garza Centers. The San Antonio Zoo making its own preparations ahead of the bitterly cold temperatures coming this week. They have extra heaters and a backup generator on standby. Rachel Malstaff, the director of Mammals, says they also have a heated pool to keep their hippos happy. Some animals enjoy the colder weather, though. During the freeze nearly two years ago, some of the animals played out in the snow, but no snow, of course, is expected this time around. And a troublesome TikTok challenge could lead to deadly shootings. Cibolo police urging parents to speak with their kids about the dangers of this new trend. Officers say the challenge encourages teens to kick a door of an unsuspecting resident, but it could have deadly consequences. Police warn a homeowner could assume someone is breaking in and defend their family or their property with violence. They also warn teens could face a, a variety of charges because of this challenge. Homeowners are encouraged to report any of this activity. 506 right now, now to the border crisis in Title 42, the pandemic era order under the Trump administration allowing the U.S. to turn asylum seekers away. Now that policy was set to expire today, but the U.S. Supreme Court put the rollback on hold. And as ABC's Morgan Norwood explains, the Biden administration is now responding to the high court, asking to reject a bid by 19 Republican-led states to keep that measure in place. This morning, mounting uncertainty over Title 42. It comes as the legal challenges over the pandemic era policy allowing the U.S. to turn away asylum seekers continues to play out. The Supreme Court putting the rollback on hold and the Biden administration asking the high court to reject a bid by 19 GOP-led states to keep the policy in place. With the decision on what comes next down to the wire, pressure is building in El Paso, where the mayor says shelters are already packed to the brim. We want to make sure that we're prepared. We've heard that numbers are really big in uh, Mexico, Red Island Waters, and that uh, there's probably over 20,000 over there today that are waiting for Title 42 to be lifted. While it's clear migrants are still coming in and in large numbers, the surge appears to be waning, at least in the El Paso area for now. According to the Department of Homeland Security, the number of migrant crossings has dropped to 1,500 per day. That's down from 2,500 at one point earlier this month. Still, the Texas National Guard beefing up security along the border, hundreds of troops on the ground, wire fencing, Humvees surrounding that area. Title 42 has emerged as a hot button political debate, with many Republicans and some Democrats arguing that it's critical to border control, while immigration advocates and most Democrats say it undercuts the asylum system. This couple from Venezuela tell me they journeyed through five countries and the dangerous Darien Gap in order for a chance at refuge from their violence and poverty torn homeland, saying, We want to offer a bright future for our kids. Should the Supreme Court lift Title 42 restrictions, the Biden administration wants it to stay in place until at least after the holidays. It just buys them a little extra time to prepare. And on that front, officials here in El Paso say they've identified two vacant schools that could serve as temporary shelters. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, El Paso, Texas. 508, 39 degrees. All right, Elon Musk has been in the news lately. He says he will resign as CEO of Twitter. However, he says one thing has to happen first. Next, find out what officers think about a new mental health pilot program uh, that's helping an area community. And taking a look at live cam, we are getting ready for some significant changes in our weather as we get set for Christmas. Justin is gonna give us the latest forecast coming up here just a bit.
512, a pilot program focuses on mental health, and Bernie is now a year old. And the officer leading the unit says it's been a learning experience for her department and the community. Officer Rebecca Foley says having a unit focused on answering mental health calls and welfare checks has given her and other officers a chance to just slow down. Foley will go to the call or do a follow-up check to see if the person needs resources that could improve their situation, which might be a visit to a hospital or an assistance program. I would say um, maybe juveniles is probably um, just they need to be listened to and um, also education is big. Um, we're going to have some education um, classes in January of next year for mental health first aid for our community. So that's something big and we're just going to open it up to everybody and just hopefully that education of listening to people, giving people access to those resources will help our community become better. And the goal here is to help reduce the number of people who end up in jail. Instead, they get mental health checks or assistance with their bills. Now 513, still 39 degrees. All right, Lenovo has a new Chromebook. We'll tell you all about its new specs and how it compares to other Chromebooks. And why Lionel Messi now has the most liked picture on Instagram following the World Cup. Take the time to melt into your holiday moments with Lindor. <laughs> Irresistibly smooth chocolate from the Lint Master Chocolatier. <coughs> this cough. <coughs> this will help. Vicks Vapor Rub? Vicks Vapor Rub's medicated vapors go straight to the source of your cough, so you can relieve your cough to breathe easier. Vicks Vapor Rub, fast acting cough relief. With Gold Bond, you can age on your own terms. New Retinol Overnight means the smoothing benefits of retinol are now for your whole body. Plus, fast working crepe corrector diminishes wrinkled skin in just two days. Gold Bond, champion your skin. Today's Tech Bytes, Elon Musk now claims he will resign as CEO of Twitter, but with one catch. He says he'll resign, quote, as soon as I find someone foolish enough to take the job. People responding to his own Twitter poll voted 57 to 43 percent in favor of Musk stepping down. Lenovo is touting the improved features of its new Chromebook, which has a larger display, and it can be used as a laptop, tablet, or it can stand like a tent for entertainment. The new Chromebook costs $350 when it starts shipping in May. And finally, more history for Argentina's soccer hero Lionel Messi. A picture of him hoisting the World Cup after last Sunday's final is now Instagram's most liked image. It's posted on Messi's official page. The picture now has nearly 70 million likes and counting. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. 517, we never like to start any day with a deadly accident, but that is the case this morning. That's right. Over uh, along the west side of San Antonio, we do have that deadly crash that was reported. Uh, let's get a look at TransGuide. I have it on rotation right now so we can get a quick peek of what's taking place in and around the Alamo City. If maybe your commute is going to uh, perhaps take you right here into town. Thankfully, traffic's not too bad for the majority of San Antonio, but we take a look there along 90 at 410. You can see that it's just quiet, which is really good. I mean, we don't really want to see any issues out there this early in the morning, but if we can make sure that we can pop up this image there along 410 at State Highway 151, that is where that deadly crash was reported earlier this morning. As Katrina Weber mentioned that it looked like it was in the clearing stages, but we do know at least one woman unfortunately died from her injuries on the scene. Uh, tow truck was out there last time we checked in with her, but of course she will be giving us the updates throughout the morning. Right now in terms of traffic, that highway is still closed. According to TransGuide and our friends over there letting us know that this was reported a little bit earlier in the morning. So 410 westbound along State Highway 151, watch out. We still have first responders out there on the scene. Now, good news is the majority of the map, it's uh, pretty green out there. So if you do have to get the morning started early, maybe go grab a cup of coffee. We were just talking about that earlier. This would probably be the best time to do it. You're essentially going to have the roads to yourself, but be on the lookout. We do have some road construction taking place. And I want to remind you, tomorrow night, we are going to see some striping work take place along State Highway 46. It is current until, again, Thursday, December 22nd, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning is when you will see alternating 
remaining lane closures in both directions from Bentwood Drive to Fairhills Drive. But other than that, this is going to be probably the big headline at this hour along Loop 410 at State Highway 151, an area we will watch very closely. Justin. Thanks, Stephen. And as uh, we look at the winter the solstice, which is happening today, by the way, 348, uh, it's the tilt of the earth, right? That gets us our seasons. And of course, we're tilted at 23.5 degrees. The solstice today at 348. So we officially go into winter. And then it's, it's right on time because the cold air gets here tomorrow and it's going to be a blast of cold air coming down from Canada. It's already starting to work in our direction. So uh, there you go. It's uh, again the tilt of the earth that does it for us. And the earth's axis is tilted away from the sun during the winter. It means it's the shortest day and longest night in the northern hemisphere. As we go outside for you, we've got a few clouds streaming across the sky at this hour. 40 degrees at the airport, 39 stints and 37 Kelly. We've got 39 at Randolph. Uh, a pretty light wind, which normally would set us up for some fog, but it's just not happening. We've got some high clouds uh, streaming through and uh, probably uh, enough to keep fog out of the picture this morning. 35 degrees at Fair Oaks Ranch, 37 uh, Canyon Lake this morning. And then as we head into the afternoon, we still got some of those clouds coming through. Forecast temperatures around 50 by noontime, 50 Fair Oaks Ranch, 53 down in Pearsall, and then probably into the mid to upper 50s this afternoon. Really a pretty nice day, and I do think we'll see some peaks of sun unlike yesterday. Uh, but of course, tomorrow is the day that we're all watching and anticipating, right? Uh, the snow is there starting to show up across parts of Montana and the Dakotas. This is kind of the leading edge of things. It will get much worse up here across the Pacific Northwest and then Midwest tomorrow, then the Northeast. That's where all the precipitation will be. We are not expecting any here in Texas. It's dry, but it's cold and that cold air spills south tomorrow. And by the morning time, the front is making it through the Texas Panhandle, so you're seeing temperatures drop in places like Amarillo. It's midday that it's on our doorstep, and right now we think the front comes through around 1 to 2 o'clock tomorrow. And we're going to be live on the KSAT weather app tomorrow if you want to join us as the front comes through, giving you all the details. Uh, that'll be tomorrow, of course, and then as we get into uh, 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, that's when temperatures really start to drop. We're talking 40s and 30s already, and we've got the gusty winds and then temperatures tumble even more into the nighttime hours down to 18 by Friday morning, 12 in Kerrville, 14 Rock Springs, 20 in Del Rio. Everyone looking at our hard freeze. We have hard freeze watch in effect, wind chill watch in effect, uh, because we expect that these uh, gusty winds, which could gust as high as 45 miles per hour. This particular model is showing 50. I don't know if it's quite that high, but very strong winds as we get into Thursday night, Friday morning will allow for wind chill values to be in the single digits. We got to prep for that. Uh, that is uh, dangerous cold. Uh, 62 degrees tomorrow with falling temperatures down to 18, 35 on Friday and then 40 Saturday. So we do get back above freezing during the afternoons, but Christmas Eve will be chilly. Christmas morning will be cold, but Christmas afternoon should be really pretty nice. 51, 60 Monday, 63 Tuesday. And as we look down the line, it's actually much warmer next week. So this is a three or four day event where we have the really, really cold mornings, but it does get better if you're not a fan of the cold weather. We've been so obsessively mm -hmm. focused on temperatures. We weren't yeah. really talking about winds a whole lot till today. Yeah. And I think this is an important factor because a lot of people have their Christmas decorations out. Oh, and yeah. These things will pull away. We've seen it. Uh, trash cans, all that stuff. Uh, you got to make sure it's secured. Somebody's going to be like, honey, have you seen our, our Christmas lights on <laughs> exactly. the house? Exactly, and then you yeah. want to show off the display with the family in town yeah. or friends. So, yeah, just sure. something to keep mind of. Absolutely. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Right now, 523, 39 degrees. All right, don't tell Tom Cruise to go jump off of a cliff because guess what? He absolutely will. Up next, we'll show you some of his latest crazy stunts as he gets prepared for the newest Mission Impossible film that debuts next year. Since it is the bro show today on GMSA, we decided to put some more action into the newscast. And what better way than with Mr. Tom Cruise? Yeah, can't go wrong there. And no stunt seems impossible for the Hollywood actor. CNN Jeannie Moe shows us his newest stunts you'll see in the upcoming Mission Impossible installment. Whatever you do, don't tell Tom Cruise to go jump off a cliff because he will. This is far and away the most dangerous thing we've ever attempted. Yeah, yeah, bet you say that every Mission Impossible. But is he really going to drive a motorcycle? 
off a mountain? Oh, yes, he did. Always wear my earplugs so I don't hear myself scream. <laughs> His fans are screaming about how insane this is. How many different ways are there to say holy sh after riding the bike off a Norwegian mountain, he eventually opened his parachute. And though he nailed it on his first take, Tom didn't stop. Six times today. Crews can add this latest stunt to hanging off a plane during takeoff. We're seeing some movies. And standing atop a biplane. And don't forget scampering around the outside of the world's tallest building. Not to mention rock climbing that most folks would have to have rocks in their head to attempt. For the latest Mission Impossible 7, they built a special motocross ramp for Tom to practice on. 13,000 practice jumps, say the movie makers. 500 practice skydives. At least Tom didn't break an ankle like he did when he slammed into a wall. So this is from the side. Here we go. We shot it with three cameras. Oh my okay, gosh. here he goes and boom! Tom watched the painful replay on the Graham Norton show. Now anyone else would go, well that's over. No! <laughs> Up he gets! Up he gets! And he's running! <laughs> In four decades, Cruz has gone from jumping off a coffee table in his undies to riding off a cliff. Ginny Moose, CNN, New York. Well, aren't you that proves it? Tom Cruise is nuts. <laughs> uh, yeah, just a, a little bit there, but uh, his movies are entertaining, though. I will say that. It's, uh, we can't wait for the next Mission Impossible. Mm -hmm. 528, 39 degrees on your Wednesday morning. Still ahead, the president of Ukraine is scheduled to visit Washington today. We'll tell you how much more money President Biden is expected to announce in security assistance for that country. Plus, how about some new headphones with a built-in air purifying system? Why a new trend in headphones and earbuds is just getting weird. Ukraine's president is expected to meet with President Joe Biden in Washington later today. Why Zelensky is visiting D.C. as his country continues to be attacked by Russia. All right, taking a look at live cam outside this morning. We are getting ready for a significant dip in the temperatures. Justin standing right next to me getting ready for his forecast. <laughs> and good morning, everybody. We've made it to midweek. It's Wednesday, December 25th. We're going to talk about a bad accident with Stephen and Katrina coming up in just a moment. But first, let's get the latest on our forecast. Justin. Have you guys heard it's going to get cold? Yeah. We, I, I heard that somewhere. <laughs> Were you telling me, RJ? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've heard it through the grapevine. Maybe it was Stephen. Yeah. I don't nah, know. Probably me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, it, it is happening, and it's still very much on schedule for tomorrow. Uh, the cold is going to be working its way in. And look at all the watches and warnings across the country. I mean, there's a litany of... of uh, warnings and advisories here, including for Texas. And what we have in effect for us is a wind at chill watch and a hard freeze watch. No surprise, right? We know that temperatures are going to be down in the teens eventually. So that's going to cause, uh, you know, plants. If you're not covering them, that will cause some issues. And then, of course, the wind chill values are going to be down in the single digits, we think, by Friday morning. Uh, we do not expect wintry weather, though, any sort of precip here across Texas. And that's the good news. Right now, we've got a few clouds out there, 40 degrees. Dew point is at 37. Northwesterly winds at about 3 miles per hour. And temperatures are down to freezing in Kerrville. 32 there, 33 Fredericksburg, 39 in New Braunfels, 45 Pleasanton, 37 in Hondo, and basically right around 40 here in San Antonio. Definitely jacket weather this morning. And it will be a mild afternoon. Temperatures will eventually make their way up into the mid-50s. 57 and mostly cloudy at 4 o'clock. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then tomorrow, of course, is when everything changes. Those temperatures essentially fall off a cliff. We're, we're going to talk about the timing of that and how it affects your Christmas Eve and Christmas coming up in just a bit. But let's go over to Stephen now with some issues on our roadways this morning. Well, Justin, yeah, definitely uh, we have a few issues out there. 410 at State Highway 151. This is a big one. Let's go ahead and get a wider look at Transguide and show you the scene. It uh, doesn't really appear that much has changed out there. Now, this is that deadly crash that we talked about a little bit earlier where we know one woman, unfortunately, did die in this incident. Of course, San Antonio police are, we should say, first responders in general have had their hands full throughout the morning. Right now, we can tell you that the highway was reported to be closed along Loop 410 westbound as you approach State Highway 151. In fact, drivers were actually being 
being diverted to exit West Military Drive so that way they could get this scene cleared up. Now, the good news is that or the good news is that right now we do not have a lot of issues out there in general. It's still pretty quiet and we hope that that trend does continue as we inch closer to the morning rush hour because we know a lot of folks are staying home for uh, perhaps for the holiday break. But as we bring it back to this incident here, we still see those flashing lights from this trans guide camera and our Katrina Weber is still live there. Katrina, what's the very latest? The highway is in fact still closed, but the area where police are working after this crash is getting smaller and smaller. So that's a sign that things could be ready to open up here pretty soon. Let me give you a look at what's going on here live. Uh, we do have two wreckers on scene. The car is now on the back of that wrecker, and you can see workers there sweeping up some of the debris. This is from a crash that happened about 2.30 this morning, and I believe we have some video from that time. The police tell us that this was the only car involved in the crash. It contained two women in their 20s. Uh, they say that for some reason the driver lost control. The car rolled over here uh, on that ramp from Loop 410 West to Highway 151. And uh, the driver was ejected from the car. Uh, she did die here at the scene. The passenger taken to a hospital for treatment of injuries. And police have been here investigating, but so far no word on exactly what went wrong behind the wheel. But again, that driver in her 20s was killed. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. It is a historic day in Washington. The president of Ukraine scheduled to visit our nation's capital today. And as, as CNN's Amy Kiley reports, it's Volodymyr Zelensky's first trip outside Ukraine since the Russian invasion began all the way back in February. We will pass on gratitude from our boys to the U.S. Congress and U.S. President for their support. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is set to visit Washington, D.C. today. It really solidifies that connection between the United States and Ukraine. The White House says Zelensky will meet with President Joe Biden and a U.S. official says Biden will announce an additional $1.8 billion in security assistance for Ukraine. The official says it will include Patriot missile systems. Ukraine has been asking for them since Russia has been taking out key infrastructure. The enemy increases the number of its troops. Our boys are braver and we need more sophisticated weapons. The White House says Zelensky will address a joint session of Congress after his meeting with Biden. To have a complete total hero in the Congress of the United States would bring honor to the Congress of the United States. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi praised Zelensky and the people of Ukraine when asked about the visit. They are fighting for democracy for all of us. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Some of the poorest Americans won't get the same child tax credits they received last year. That's because a measure expanding the enhancement didn't make it into the nearly $2 trillion federal spending package. Democrats wanted to include language that would make language rather that would make the tax credit roughly equal to what Americans got under last year's American Rescue Plan, but it couldn't get the 10 votes it needed to pass in the Senate. Now, the parents of an estimated 19 million kids won't get the full $2,000 benefit this year because they earn too little. Though the child tax credit is backed by both parties, Republicans don't generally support enhancements that open it up to lower income families. They believe doing so can discourage parents from actually working. The Drug Enforcement Administration says this year it has seized more than 379 million potentially deadly doses of fentanyl. This is more than double the amount that it seized last year. Laboratory testing revealed that six out of 10 fentanyl laced pills contained a potentially lethal dose of the drug. The DA stated in a release that fentanyl is the deadliest drug threat facing this country. It is highly addictive man made opioid that is 50 times more potent than heroin. Also seized was nearly 131,000 pounds of methamphetamines, more than 4,300 pounds of heroin, and over 444,000 pounds of cocaine. A parade in Buenos Aires to celebrate the return of Argentina's World Cup champion team was abruptly cut short as millions of people poured on the streets in a chaotic attempt to catch a glimpse of team members. So many jubilant fans swarmed the Argentinian capital that players were forced to abandon the open-air bus, taking them to Buenos Aires. Instead, they boarded helicopters for a capital flyover, the government billed as an aerial parade. The success of the Lionel Messi-led squad brought much needed good news for the soccer craze, but economically hurting nation where nearly four in 10 live in poverty. 
539, 39 degrees. And lots of people will probably be getting some new headphones for Christmas, and we're taking a look at why some of them are just getting a little weirder. Outside with live cam, you know it's about to get cold, but maybe what you have not factored in was how unbelievably windy it's going to be with this big wallop of an Arctic cold front. Justin will have more on that coming up. 542, listen up, headphones are getting weirder. That's the official opinion of one tech industry analyst, but really all you have to do is look at the pictures to see that's true. One example, a $949 pair of air purifying headphones from Dyson or bone conduction headphones which transmit sound through vibrations on the user's skull or open earbuds which similarly don't block the ears. So why this sudden rush to get customers excited with quirky updates? One factor, smartphones and smartwatches look roughly the same from year to year, and introducing unique headphone designs is a way to stand out. Another factor is the evolution of headphone technology like noise cancellation and built-in wireless. Switching gears, about one in five U.S. adults suffer from a mental illness in any given year, but despite growing demand for mental health services, many are struggling to get an appointment. CNN's Mandy Gaither talks to a licensed therapist about what to do if you can't find a provider. Across the U.S., demand for mental health treatment is growing. People are struggling to figure out where to start, what kind of providers exist, what kind of services exist, and how do you go about finding one? The Association of American Medical Colleges says there aren't nearly enough mental health providers to meet the demand of the nation's growing population. A 2018 analysis showed the workforce of psychiatrists was shrinking and could drop to a projected low of as many as 31,000 psychiatrists in just two years. So if you're struggling to get an appointment with a psychiatrist or psychologist, licensed therapy Therapist Jody Baumstein says don't limit your search. Licensed clinical social workers, licensed professional counselors, licensed marriage and family therapists, all of whom can provide that same kind of treatment. To find a potential therapist, Baumstein suggests pulling up online directories, which list providers in your area. Some employers may offer free short-term mental health benefits. Check with private providers on whether they may have clinical interns that can help. If you're going through an insurance provider, go over options with them. They might reimburse you for a portion of the cost to see an out-of-network provider. Talk to your primary care provider, too, or your child's pediatrician. Baumstein says they may have insight on clinicians in your community and can refer you. You can also talk to your child's school. There may be help available there. Finally, if you can't get an appointment right away, get on a waiting list. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Yeah, some very important information there around the holidays. Taking a look at your time and temperature, it is 544, 39 degrees outside right now. All right, this cute little pupper's standing by with the Mantle Defense League looking for a new home just in time for the holidays. Mike will have more coming up. And Stephen Cavazos is tracking the roads right now. We have a major crash to talk about this morning. We will check in with Stephen just a little bit to check out how things are looking out there this morning. <laughs> well, here is a little one, kind of on the shy side, beautiful little Christmas sweater. Nadia is here from the Animal Defense League, and who is this little baby? This is Georgie Girl. She's a three-year-old dachshund mix, and as you can see, she is quiet, shy, and perfect for a family that's looking for Yeah, probably, nice probably not the... Probably not the best for, your arm was tangled up in the, in the little leash there. Probably not the best for a bunch of little kids, uh, but yeah, just, I contented to be held and she uh, hasn't missed many meals either. So for a dachshund, she's kind of a little on the, the plumper side there. She is. Yes, she's we like a little sausage. We all gain a little bit over the holidays, don't we? What y'all got going on? So it's December. So as you know, uh, the holiday is going to bring new holiday hours, 11 to 3. Mm -hmm. um, and as we start the new year, what we're really pushing for is a lot of volunteer hours. Maybe new year, new you, and really commit to coming into the shelter and helping us out. Um, we need 
fosters, so anyone who can give our longer staying um, fosters a home for the holidays, that would be something we would really appreciate as well. Um, and of course, coming into the campus and helping us out. Okay, and again, even volunteering can be anything from office work mm -hmm. to actually hands-on with the pet. So whatever right. your, your specialty is or what you'd like to do, they are more than happy to uh, welcome you with open arms. So, Thanks. and then you can probably get a nice little kiss from this little puppy here. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like more information on all the volunteer opportunities and little Georgie girl, head on over to 11th Area under Nacogdoches or the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. Pet Smart on Four Winds or ADLTexas.org. Merry Christmas, dear. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mike. All right, let's get a look here at State Highway 151 near 410. This has really been the big problem throughout the morning where we had that deadly crash that was reported in the early hours of the morning. Now, we know at least one woman, unfortunately, uh, did die from her injuries on the scene, but uh, this has really been an active investigation for quite a while. We just heard from Katrina Weber a little while ago when she did tell us it looked like they were in the clearing stages, and that investigation does seem to be growing a little bit smaller and smaller, but still, that highway is closed off right now, and it's led to a small delay along Loop 410 westbound at State Highway 151. Right now, traffic is still being diverted to exit West Military Drive. So again, something that drivers want to keep on their radar. Uh, another thing to keep on your radar is just how quiet it is right there uh, on the map. We know that a lot of folks are going to be heading out of town for the holidays. I am one of them. I will be heading out on the road tomorrow. So just remember to drive safe. Give yourself plenty of time. The roads look pretty dry as well. So we haven't spotted any major incidents along US 90 at 410. Other places like here along 90 at Nogalee. It's getting a little bit busier, but the good news is that we have uh, schools out for the holidays. Mm -hmm. We have people off from work, not us, uh, but it mm -hmm. makes the roads a less congested place to be. So I would say it's pretty tranquil. It, it is. It's almost, almost been a ghost town this week down here downtown. Yeah, Central Catholic is right across it, from us. It's, it's been nice, too, when you have to go make the taco run, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> Wait, who's Thanks doing that today? Right across the street, who's yeah. Who's doing oh, that yeah, today? We, this we guy. Not me. That round. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, you know, one thing you were talking about going to work, uh, yeah. for those who have to work Friday morning, I'll be here Friday morning, you, you want to get all your jackets ready. And I say jackets mm -hmm. plural because Friday morning is going to be one of those layer up and then wear like three jackets and on there's top of that. no shame in layering trust me no no <laughs> well listen it's it's a shock to the system if we lived in minnesota okay no big deal but when we've been at you know 60 and 70 most of december to jump down to 18 uh your body's just not used to that yet as we go outside for you right now not cold yet that cold air is still just about uh well 36 hours away 40 degrees right now we've got 37 with the dew point north northwesterly winds at about three there are a few spots below freezing this morning. Kerrville is one of those. 30, 33 Fredericksburg, 40 in Austin. We're at 40 here in town. A few spots outside of San Antonio in the 30s. 38 degrees right now in Helotus, 37 in Rio Medina. Your case had 12 hour forecast. We'll eventually make our way up into the 40s by uh, mid morning and then close to 50 by noontime. This afternoon, we should top out around 56 or 57. We are going to see some sun today, I think, uh, but a lot of high clouds will be streaming through, so we'll call it mostly cloudy. I want to show you some travel impacts if you do plan to travel the next few days. For today, it's the Pacific Northwest that's the issue, and I don't think there will be a lot of issues, but there could be a few flight delays up here. Tomorrow, things really start to take hold, and this big winter system starts to produce quite a bit of snow. So Minneapolis, Omaha, Wichita, down to Oklahoma City, this is where there could be quite a few impacts tomorrow if you're traveling in that direction, even parts of the Texas Panhandle. And then by Thursday, it's the Midwest and Great Lakes that get hit pretty hard, and this could cause some flight delays if you're headed in that direction. As we've been saying, though, much of Texas is going to be just fine other than cold. We're not expecting any ice or snowy roads uh, if you're traveling within the Lone Star State. Our frontal timing tomorrow, it'll be in the Hill Country by the morning hours, and then probably here around San Antonio between 12 and 2 p.m., and then working through the rest of the area between 3 and 5. What you can expect, temperatures will go from 60s down to the 30s pretty quickly. Uh, we'll be in the 30s by the evening hours, and then gusts to 40, maybe even 45 miles per hour with northerly winds behind this front. And then wind chills will start to kick in as early as Thursday afternoon, but it is that Friday morning wind chill that really is going to is uh, is going to be brutal. Here's a look at the forecast tomorrow. So by noontime, we're at 61, but by Thursday, uh, by 4 p.m., I should say, we're at 42. 26 by 8 p.m., and by midnight, we're down to 23. No precip chances, just windy 
And uh, here's a look at the lows Friday morning, 18 here in town, 12 Kerrville, 14 Rock Springs. That's what we have to prepare for. And you have today and early tomorrow to get that done. 62 before the temperatures fall tomorrow, 35 Friday, and then we'll go 40 Saturday for Christmas Eve, 51 on Christmas Day. It'll be 22 Christmas morning, so it'll feel a lot like Christmas. Santa will feel right at home <laughs> as he makes his deliveries. Mm, yeah, so uh, we're getting ready for some temperatures. Still time to get the pipes, plants, all of that covered. Yeah, you wrap the spigots, wrap some of those sensitive plants, bring the, the, the potted plants inside, and you can start, you know, you don't have to, you can wait to start dripping your faucets, but that's something else to think about as we get into um, Thursday night, Friday morning. All right, yeah, time now is 5.54 and still hanging in there, 39 degrees this morning. Let's take a look at all your lottery numbers. Pick three, zero, seven, zero, Fireball one, Daily four, five, three, one, seven, Fireball one, Cash five, six, 10, 30, 32, 33. And Mega Millions, nobody won. It's up to $510 million. 3, 4, 33, 36, 52. Mega Ball 17, Mega Plier 4. Good morning coming up here on GMA, the latest on the massive winter storm sweeping across the country that could bring the coldest Christmas in decades for millions. How it's affecting travel and your holiday deliveries. Also this morning, what Elon Musk is now saying about his future at Twitter. And we're talking all things Christmas with four days to go, the can't miss shipping deadlines, how to make sure grocery prices don't steal your holiday, discounts on gift cards, those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, we're sharing the not so sweet side of artificial sweeteners, why they may not be good for your health. Trans Guide this morning, we have had some problems, and right now you're looking at 410 and Calabra and a whole lot of first responder activity that's affecting the one side of the highway. Stephen Cavazos will have much more coming up. This morning, a rollover crash on the west side of town leaves one woman dead and another in the hospital. We'll tell you more about it. Cleanup is underway this morning following that deadly earthquake that rocked Northern California around this time yesterday morning. We will look at some of the aftermath. And taking you outside with live cam, we are getting ready for a big chill to come our way. Justin is standing by with the forecast. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is December 21st. Today's newscasters have been dubbed affectionately <laughs> the Bro Show because RJ Marquez yeah. is here along with the other guys. Hey, RJ. Yeah, I love to be with you guys on this Wednesday morning. As people get ready for the holidays, obviously a lot of excitement in the air. That's right. We've got a major traffic incident. We're going to talk to Stephen about that in just a moment. But right now, Justin is in for Mike Osterhage, who is headed out on holiday break. And Justin, we were talking a lot about these bitterly cold temperatures. Mm -hmm. I love this morning that you're updating folks on how gusty these winds are about to become. That's the other side to this. I think we've kind of prepared now for the cold. We've we've heard it for several days now, but what about the wind? We know the wind chills will be cold, but these gusty winds may also disrupt things in the sense that if you don't have your Christmas decorations tied down, they may be down the road by Friday morning with the way these winds are looking. We could see some gusts 40 to 45. So this is just another component of all this that you need to keep in mind. As we go outside for you right now, uh, not a bad morning, 39. We've got uh, some high clouds over top of us. North northwesterly winds at about three miles per hour. And oh, by the way, today is the winter solstice. We have finished, uh, we uh, go into winter today officially, and the Earth's axis is tilted away from the sun. So it's the shortest day and longest night in the northern hemisphere. It's going to feel like winter by the time we get into midday tomorrow. So this is right on schedule. 37 degrees at 8 o'clock, 42, 9 a.m. By noontime, 50 degrees, and then this afternoon, we're in the mid-50s. Mid to upper 50s, mostly cloudy skies, and those winds will be light out of the south. But uh, as we said, they become much more gusty northerly winds with that front tomorrow. We'll talk about all of that and time out that front for you once again. But let's get over to Stephen now. Unfortunately, not a great morning on the roads. It's not, and it's actually in the same area of travel here, Justin. Check out 410 at Culebra, 
those westbound lanes have been a problem all morning long. All right, let's get a wider look there at Transguide. You can see that, of course, we do have a congestion, a congestion that is actually slowly building out there. Originally, we had a deadly crash was reported earlier in the morning, and I spoke to our friends at Transguide just a few moments ago. We know that that crash has already cleared out, and it does look like the highway has reopened. However, a little bit further down near Huacuelebra, we have a secondary crash reported in the same lanes, 410 westbound right there behind me. You can see the traffic is just moving pretty slow uh, and we do have first responders out there as well. They've had quite the busy morning, but let's get you right there to the map and that's where we see the red that just seems to be staying pretty much in the same area westbound. Uh, but again, this one just a little bit further back on Culebra Road uh, again. 410 has been a problem, but we do know that there's been better updates where we had that deadly crash reported. It does look like the highway has reopened there, but still watch out for those first responders who are now working on that second crash. Wide look at the map does show a lot of a lot more green out there, so perfect time to take advantage of these empty roadways. But be on the lookout. We're going to watch this incident throughout the morning. 410 at Gulebra, you can see that traffic is moving pretty slowly one lane right now, but we'll get more updates throughout the morning and have you updated before you, your commute gets rolling. Mark Archie. Stephen, thank you. Here's the details on that early morning incident. A woman is dead after an early morning uh, car accident. Here is what happened. It happened just after 2.30 this morning at Loop 410 at Highway 151. Police say two women in their 20s were in the car that rolled over. The driver was thrown from the vehicle. She died at the scene. The woman in the passenger seat is in the hospital right now. At this time, officers know exactly what caused the crash. And we now know the name of the 27 year old woman who was shot in the head while riding in a vehicle on I-10. The Bear County Medical Examiner says she is Rain Rice from Del Rio. The shooting happened Saturday afternoon on I-10 near Colorado Street. According to San Antonio Police, four adults and two children were traveling westbound on I-10 when a shot was fired in their direction, striking the woman in the head. Police are still searching for a suspect. More than 11 years later, and police still don't know the people responsible for killing a woman who was at the wrong place at the wrong time. This is the woman who was killed, 52-year-old Alma Garcia. It happened on December 15th of 2011 on Cox Avenue near South Hackberry and South Presa Streets. And that's where San Antonio police say two men were in an argument that led to gunfire. A stray bullet hit and killed Garcia. The suspects are still on the loose today. If you have any information that can lead to their arrest, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at the number in your screen, 210-224-STOP. Cleanup is underway in Northern California after a deadly earthquake struck yesterday. Take a look at this aftermath right here behind me. We know at least two people were killed in this earthquake. 12 other people were hurt and tens of thousands of homes and businesses, as you could see here along the West Coast, still remain without power. The magnitude 6.4 earthquake happened near Ferndale, a small community about 200 miles northwest of San Francisco. Damage to buildings and infrastructure is still being assessed this morning. The state's governor proclaimed a state of emergency for the area last night. Topping your morning consumer news, Wells Fargo has agreed to pay $3.7 billion to settle allegations. It charged illegal fees on loans and checking and savings accounts. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau ordering the bank to use $2 billion of that to refund customers. Chemical giant 3M now says it'll stop making so-called forever chemicals by the year 2025. They earn the nickname for how long they stick around in the environment. Many have been linked to health problems from cancer to low birth weight. Elon Musk claims he will resign as CEO of Twitter, but of course with one catch. He says he'll resign, quote, as soon as I find someone foolish enough to take the job, end quote. People responding to his own Twitter poll voted 57 to 43 percent in favor of Musk stepping down. And more history this morning for Argentina soccer hero Lionel Messi. A picture of him hoisting the World Cup after last Sunday's final is now Instagram's most liked image. It's posted on Messi's official page. The picture has nearly 70 million likes and counting. 607 39 degrees. You're watching GMSA. And still ahead on GMSA, Christmas Day is almost here, but a lot of people are still shopping for their presents, myself included. <laughs> Coming up a little later, we've got some last minute gift ideas if you're starting to panic. And are you getting ready to travel for the holidays? Some of you probably are. Roads and airports expect to be absolutely mad this week because of that massive winter storm hitting many parts of the U.S. What you need to know before you hit the road 
coming up. And going outside with live cam this morning, a chilly start to your Wednesday. Justin is standing by with the very latest on our forecast this week.